Welcome back to Gaming Assembled. Today is part one of our 867 Orvito roleplay series. Thank you for joining us. Before we start, we'd love to hear from you. So like, comment and subscribe to the channel and interact with us on social media. And thank you to David Yl and Jacob Noel for commenting already. Let's get started. Okay, so welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 uh, and welcome to the new series. Uh, welcome to Italy. This is the replacement for the Madeira campaign on the schedule for the channel. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the announcement video that I put out on Thursday uh, discussing that. Uh, if you haven't, check it out. Have a, have a listen. But the idea, in a nutshell, without repeating myself too much, is that uh, I wanted to make sure that what I was putting out on the channel was what people were interested in. Uh, the Madeira campaign, I'm not certain, was that. And the roleplay side of things seems to be more that. So this is what I am going to do. Now, the other side of it as well is that I had some feedback uh, regarding how to best improve the role player side of things and try and deep dive into it better. And the um, the the reference that was pointed out to me of of, of a good example of such um, playthroughs are certainly the the works of one proud Bavarian who is un, undisputedly a uh, you know brilliant at what he does and. The idea is is that I'm not intending to try and be him. I'm not trying to be a new version of him to copy what he does exactly. I'm me. I, I do things my way and things. And, uh, but there's certainly a lot of positives to take from uh, what he does and the way he does it and to integrate into what we can do. And there's certainly good pointers there. And so that's what we're going to try and do. Try and make this as engaging and, uh, and as fun as we can. Um, I do, as I've said in the announcement video, I, I do want you to still get in touch with me. You know, give me advice. Tell me what you think I could do to improve. How we could move forward. Things I could do differently. I, I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to try and integrate in what your thoughts are uh, into trying what we're doing. So, um, you know, trying to integrate that into what we're doing. So, uh, I really, really would love that. So, please do... Uh, get in touch and give me your comments. But I think uh, without much further ado, I will say one other thing, but other than that, without much further ado, we will get stuck in. The one thing I do want to say, with this uh, playthrough, we are going to use some mods. It is a bit of a risky thing to use mods at this point, because obviously there is a new uh, DLC, a new update coming out in the near future. I don't know the when part of that. Um, the Steam information, as far as I can see, simply says spring. Um, so presumably, uh, it's now March, end of March. So presumably that's not far away. Um, but um, I don't know a date offhand, whether one's been published or not. I've not seen it, but I don't know. But the idea is, is that with new updates, obviously comes potential issues with mods. I've used a... A list of immersion mods. It's called the Ultimate Immersion Collection, which is um, on the One Proud Bavarian um, Steam Workshop page. Um, I've used that as a bit of a, a loose guide. Um, some of the, the this the guide that he's the collection that he's put together hasn't been updated in quite a long time, quite a while now, and so a lot of the mods, a good proportion of them anyway. Um, don't work as they should they're not been updated and so what I've done to try and reduce the risk of issues as much as I possibly can is I've only included what I think are probably the highlights the the, the main ones to include and certainly the ones that have been updated most recently because in the hopes that they will continue to be updated um, and uh, go from there so I will include in the description of the video a list of uh, mods um that um that I've I've used and um you know if you've got other suggestions that I can put in or if you feel that something is taking out we can talk about that in the comments and on social media if you are so inclined. So 
I'll shut up now in that regard and we'll get cracking on the uh, the video today. So let's meet our character. Now we are playing as Count Theophylact of Ovito. You've probably had a campaign in this area yourself. Um, you will probably have um, seen some on YouTube. I don't know. But the idea is, is that with this being a role play, with us having the mods in it, there'll be a different flavor to it perhaps, hopefully. Um, we're going to try and do it purely from a role play perspective, as I said, a really deep dive. So hopefully that will give you some variety, even if you have seen something of a campaign in this area before. Um, so the thing that we can sort of take first off from our, our character now, this is us, um, is that we are a very good Christian man. OK, we are zealous, we are calm, we are diligent. And what's more, our next door neighbor is the Pope. OK, and he is something of a hero to us. OK, he is zealous and calm and diligent as well. He's uh, August. He's, he's a charismatic negotiator. So have we. We've we've grown up with him being in power and, you know, next door. And, and you know, even before he was Pope, he, he will have been a cardinal and, and he w will have been a well-known figure in the Italian community. We're the same culture as him and he, he, he was a well-known guy and he was just an inspiration to us, really. And so we've modeled ourselves on him and uh, the, the realm under our rule, hopefully, has benefited from that. Um, and obviously we are married, we have our Countess who is Countess Brunhilde, or Br Br Brunhilde, uh, is that, or is it, yeah, Brun Brun Brunhilde of Orvito. And she is, she's not quite had our, she's not been as fortunate as us in our upbringing, she's not quite seen the world in the same eyes as us, she's got some unfortunate traits, she's a, got a bit of a temper and you know she can make some strange decisions at times, but at heart she's she's a uh, a good person. I think I think we she needs some calming down. She's a little bit of a uh, a lunatic overall, but you know th th she has her wild days uh, and things. But you know we love her. She's she's part of our life and she's mother to our son. Uh, she's been through a lot. You know bless her. I mean she is the one surviving member of her dynasty left um, and things. She's. She's lost a lot. She's lost her family and things, uh, and you know the um, the effect of that has taken its toll on her. I think, uh, but we're here to support her. You know, we're here to help guide her through, and hopefully, guide her back to the church, which is you know just everything to us um, and things. And uh, in terms of our dynasty, we only have uh, just the two living members so far. There's, there, there's us and there's our son, uh, Giano. And Giano is is a good lad. He's, he's, he's sort of a chip off the old block, really. He's trying to learn to be us. He's, he's already showing signs of being a bit of a scholar. He's a thinker. He's, he's, he, he's very keen to learn. And so obviously we want to sort of encourage that. Now, I mean, ultimately one day he's going to have to rule our realm and things. And so we, we we will ultimately want him to be uh, a well-rounded individual and help him to sort of perhaps learn some of the diplomacy that we, we've come to love. But I think, you know, at the minute he's only four, he's only young. We want to encourage him. And, uh, you know, a scholarly education is never a bad thing. You know, that's something that he, uh, he, he can uh, grow into and perhaps maybe... You know, he will share our love of theology as, as we go forward. And so I think we'll, you know, we'll start off, we'll encourage that, uh, you know, that, that in him and try and help him along that route. Um, but, um, you know, that's, that's our family, the, the beginning part. Uh, obviously, it's important to us. We are, you know, we're, we're part of uh, a wider sort of situation, the, the development of our realm moving forward. And we will definitely want to... Uh, support that uh, and try and, uh, and and make the best of our situation to really help not just for the benefit of our family but the people who live in our lands uh, we are their protector and we must do a good job of it and so let's set our lifestyle I mean I think we could definitely go down the route of, of a learning 
you know, certainly a theological sort of training and things and, uh, and look at that side of things. That is definitely something that we will probably want to do at some point in our life. But at the minute, I mean, we are diligent in our duty and certainly supporting our son and helping him to develop and, and develop our realm um, it is certainly something, you know, help our family to, to become part of the furniture, so to speak, in this realm. I think that is certainly something that we would want to do. Um, and so I think family focus within a, our diplomatic leanings is certainly where we'd go just for now at the very least. We can look once our son is older and he's, he's no longer needing educating, perhaps we can spend time to ourselves, you know, sort of be a little bit more uh, inward thinking and think about what we want to learn. But for now, it has to be about our son, about our children and their development moving forward. Um, so there we go. That's our family. So uh, let's have a look at the wider situation now beyond our borders. Obviously, we have this one county here. We have uh, our bishop, who is our only vassal. Um, he is perhaps not what we would have ideally wanted for a bishop. You know, he's, he's got a temper on him. He's he's a little bit wrathful and, and vengeful and, and uh, you know, sort of uh, paranoid about what other people think of him. You know, perhaps, again, he's had a bit of a rough upbringing, perhaps, maybe, but, you know, he went into the church to try and get ahead and he's, he's done well for himself, but he's perhaps not the ideal representative of God. Um, you know, uh, on our council, but he's, he's who we have. Uh, we probably could do with trying to make him sort of like us a little bit more. Maybe we can sway him to our way of thinking, try and bring him back to the church a little bit more and realign him with what uh, the greater good is. So perhaps that's something we can do by trying to sway him. Um, if we have a look at our, our other councillors, though, our, our council, uh, we have, of course, John, which is an ever popular name with our uh, our series on this channel, uh, but um, our Chancellor is, again, he's very much a, a man after our own heart. He's, he's very much the same as us in terms of the, the setup and things of his of his traits and his skill set. Um, the one thing he is lacking, of course, as a good Christian, is a good Christian wife. And so I think that's perhaps what we could look at trying to help him with. I mean, if we have a look down here, that's what would be lovely is if obviously we can try and uh, give him what he needs in, in that regard and, and then hopefully his descendants can continue to serve our realm faithfully uh, over time. So we just need to find the right, uh, the right person for him. And of course, she needs to be uh, a good Christian woman. Um, so I'm thinking Trudy here is probably going to be a good one. So obviously she's got... Uh, some uh, you know diplomatic leanings herself, which obviously would mean they had a lot in common. She's compassionate. She's content. She's craven, but you know we're not putting a sword in a hand and sending her to battle. She's she's there to help support him in his work. So I think she would make a very good addition to our court uh, and things, and to uh, John's household, which will be great. Um, and so he'd make a very good chancellor for us. Our uh, steward, well. To be honest with you, he might actually be better as our marshal. Um, he is diligent in his duty and things. He does have a little bit of a, uh, a negative side, a, a bit of a vengeful side, but he is a holy warrior, and that's, that makes up for, for many things in our eyes. He's, he's committed to God, he's committed to the realm and his duty, so I certainly think that it's uh, a good idea for him to be our marshal. He can... So to be the one to take us forward militarily uh, going uh, into this new campaign. So, but again, he needs a good Christian wife. And so let's see if we can find someone. Um, let's see. So if we sort by military, perhaps. And, oh, there we go. Straight at the top of the list. Uh, diligent, brave, gregarious. She sounds like the perfect person. She's a compassionate adventurer, again, a good Christian woman. Um, doesn't matter that she's not Italian heritage. That's fine. It doesn't matter. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. It's all good. Um, so we'll bring her in and she can be part of our uh, growing realm. Uh, so let's look at our new uh, steward. He, 
Well, he's unfortunate. He obviously can't have a family, which is which is sad. But he is a very good man. You know, he's uh, gregarious and he's patient and he's content. He's he's you know, the, the the poster child for the Christian Church, really. In that regard, he's uh, you know very going to be very suitable for us. He's not very good as a steward, to be fair. So perhaps he would perhaps be better serving in a different role. Maybe even uh, something like court tutor. Um, maybe he would be good for that if we can get him to do it. Um, he's off. No, we, we can't. Uh, which is a shame. Although it would seem that she would be quite good at that. So maybe we'll make her the court tutor. But um, uh, we'll have to see if we can find a role for, for Gizolf moving forward. Because I think we, we need to really. I mean, he's, he's such a good man. And, uh, you know, we, we need to try and include him somewhere in our realm. Um, but I, I think in the long run, I don't think he's quite suited to be our steward. Um, with only sort of stewardship of two. Um, but, you know, we can see how, you know, see what we can do with him and try and find him something. Maybe we could, if, if we came across a, uh, uh, a church holding somewhere, maybe he could go and do that. We could ask him if he wanted to take the vows. Um, that might be uh, something that's uh, that we look at moving forward, and and he could serve as in another in another way, perhaps. Maybe he could become um, our our bishop in the long run. I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Um, but um, he can stay in there in that spot. I think for now, perhaps, or maybe. I mean, he's temperate, vengeful, grey eminence. Well, he would be better, um, although he'd also be better for Spymaster, so maybe uh, maybe that would be better. Um, maybe we... I mean, what's he like that? Maybe we swap them around. That's it. That looks like a good idea. We want him to have a role. We swap them around like that. And, uh, oh, she can't serve as uh, a steward, though, can she? Because, obviously, the ladies can't. Um, that's a shame. But we have Gizolf. Um, and I think he will be good in that role. Um, you know, he has some, he has better ability there. And, and he's a, a good man, despite delving in sort of the dirty sort of politics of things. I mean, we could still find him a good Christian wife. I mean, just because he can't have children doesn't mean he has to be alone and, and lonely. Um, so, you know, we, we should find him somebody. Um, I mean, perhaps we can do a Christian thing and find someone who is in a similar situation to him. You know, someone who else can't have children and, uh, um, you know, and, and is, you know, looking at possibly a life alone. And, and there you go, at... at a good Christian woman who is in a very similar situation to him, um, she would be a very good person to bring in, and they can keep each other company. They can both be uh, be together. Um, so that I think would be a lovely match for him, and so we'll definitely do that. Um, so we are still in need of a steward. So I think I mean the best person in terms of their stats for the job is Indolf, although he's not exactly amazing at it. Um, he, he has some positive traits. He's not the ideal Christian. You know, he could be a better man, uh, and perhaps we will try and work on him in that regard. I mean, we also have this chap here, who uh, uh, Rodwald, who is not quite as good as a steward, but he's not bad. Uh, but he is more up our street as a person. So perhaps we lean more towards him, his, his religious leanings, his chast, he's just, uh, he's a religious paragon. Perhaps we go for him more uh, and things. And again, we'll find him a uh, a good Christian wife to uh, to support him in his new role. Uh, let's have a look. Um, oh, well, let's turn it off. That, we'll go for Fertile, there we go. So let's see, who have we got? Um, let's see, we need somebody who, there you go. Again, doesn't matter that she's craven, she's compassionate, she's diligent, she can support him in his work, perfect for the job. 
So there are council, and I think as we go through things, we will be able to sort of consult them and ask them what they think for actions, get their views, what they would think on things, and sort of take a bit of a group vote on, on things, and that's certainly a good idea. Uh, we do need a uh, court physician. Um, I don't think we've got anybody who is particularly suitable. Um, so what we could do is search for a court physician because I want my family to be well looked after, to be healthy, to be happy, and we need someone to take care of those needs. So we'll see who comes along. So we've looked at our realm. Let's step outwards a little bit. I know this is quite a long introduction into things, but I think setting the groundwork, setting the scene of who we are and what we're about and that will help us to guide our actions moving forward in the role play. So let's set our scenes further afield. So I mean, in the the vast further afield, obviously we have obviously the kingdoms. Obviously, the our king is a carling, of course, and in this time frame, uh, they are everywhere. They are dominating Europe. Um, and um, Louis the Second, the younger, is. He's, he's a decent man, you know, yes, he has his negatives, he has his flaws, he's a little bit greedy and arrogant, but he's not a, a bad man, he's not a terrible ruler, there are certainly a lot worse, uh, I mean, Charles the Bald, look, obviously, is deceitful, he's a quarreler, you know, it could be a lot worse in terms of, uh, you know, godless planner even, so there you go, um, you know, so there could be a lot worse people out there, who we could serve under as, you know, have as our, our liege lord. I mean, ultimately, he's not our direct liege lord, although we can certainly pin him on there. And I think as well, pinning the post onto the, uh, the post, the Pope even, onto the outliner would be a good idea too. But our direct liege is this guy. He's Duke Adalberto of Tuscany. And he is bit of a quandary really um, I mean on the one side he is a godless antagonist and he's very callous and deceitful and you know there's 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 a lot of negatives about him he's obviously got a temper and he's, he's vengeful and things he's a, obviously a bit of a warrior but he's also regarded as a holy warrior which is a bit strange I mean perhaps secretly he has leanings towards another faith towards something else perhaps he just pays lip service to the catholic church and he's you know his views really are actually elsewhere perhaps perhaps he he was a devout a devout christian but now he is is less so and for whatever reason perhaps it's the events on the battlefield have changed him who knows uh, we'll have to keep an eye on him i mean if he is a bad ruler if he is a, a bad liege, I mean, I suppose we'd have to think about that in terms of how much we support him. You know, we because it's not just him and sort of his family we need to consider. It's the people under him. You know, it's the peasants. It's the normal people who would live live under his rule. And if he is not a, a just ruler, not someone who would be suitable to be our duke, then uh, perhaps... You know, perhaps something different, you know, a different alternative would be better. I mean, for example, his brother, he's the neighbor there. He is a content zealot. And so, and he's, he's zealous, he's generous, he's, he's content, he's a gray eminence. So he is someone who I, I think we would very much like to get to know. He, he's, you know, very much a, a kindred spirit and, and, and definitely more the, the, the duke that our realm deserves perhaps uh, so maybe um, if uh, he did end up moving forward to take a, a claim take it well he has a claim but to, you know to to use his claim on the the ducal title then maybe our support would go more towards him for the benefit of the people of course and so um, so you know again might be worth pinning both of those chaps again to our outliner so we can keep an eye on them and see what they do. Um, our other neighbours, again, very much the Christian individual, honest, compassionate, forgiving, uh, someone who uh, would be worth keeping an eye on and worth trying to, uh, in the long run, perhaps gain the support of. Uh, some Certainly someone who I think we could be good friends with. Uh, and let's have a look at our neighbour here. Again, we've been very fortunate in our, in our neighbours. 
um, so honest and compassionate. He has got a bit of a temper, but you know, generally, he's he's a he's a good man, a good Christian man. Um, so uh, that sounds pretty good. And he's he's already got quite the family. He's, he's got a twenty year old son who again is is showing some good Christian promise. Um, we've got one son who perhaps has lived in the shadow of his older brother and has sort of you know had some bad experiences which has changed his his way of his viewpoint of things it's made him a little paranoid and things so maybe maybe that's not all been good and he's got a sister a young sister who is evidently a bit of a tomboy she's grown up with brothers knows how to fight you know knows that better than you know the 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 embroidery that she's perhaps been given by her a tutor and things and so but she said no I'm, I'm going out to fight with the swords and with the bow and things she's um, she's very much the action girl perhaps um, I mean perhaps you know despite that you know despite her um, her less than perhaps ladylike way of things I mean perhaps she will turn into a holy warrior you know perhaps she will be uh, someone who you know despite um, not perhaps taking the traditional role in the medieval world, perhaps she is someone who we can respect and things. And certainly the family is a connection that I think we should definitely be trying to make. So I'm thinking that, you know, we, we could certainly look at entertaining a, an offer of betrothal between our two lands and again, try and just, if we're going to, if, if we did need to sort of try and look at saving the people from the cruelty of, of this duke, then we are going to need support. And so uh, support within the realm is probably a good thing and we can try and help with that. So um, I think that would be a very good connection that we could do, certainly uh, in the interests of, uh, of the church and, uh, and of God, uh, trying to strengthen the realms. So um, let's get going. Um, well, I know that's been a bit of a long intro and things, as I said, but I think it's worthwhile in that we now sort of know a little bit about who we are and uh, and where we're coming from. Um, so there we go. All those marriage requests are coming through. And a court physician. The world is full of dangers, even to a count and his court. As per my request, my servants have inquired after recommendations now they have assembled a few options to choose from. So let's see who we've got. Bianca. So a godless paragon. Well, the paragon aspect of that sounds good, but obviously not, not a godless paragon. <laughs> you know, it's not someone who pays no heed to the faith whatsoever. Um, you know, she might be fairly well learned, but I'm not sure she'd fit into our court. But here we go. Honorable empath. Again, he has a bit of a temper, but he is a, um, albeit a misguided warrior, is a warrior. And he's he's one of us. He's an Italian. Um, communication will be nice and easy. So I'm thinking, although he's perhaps not quite as talented, maybe we can help him to develop his talents. But I think we go for him uh, as our core physician. I think that will be a lot better. Um... Let's have a little look at how we've got set up. So we've got pikemen, so as our uh, one of our men at arms regiments, so that's good. We've not got the other one yet, so we could look at trying to do that at some point as well. And our knights are mostly just our council, which obviously we don't really want. So I think we look at trying to invite some new knights, bring them in, and we'll go from there. Oh, hang on a minute. The king is dead. And his daughter has taken his throne. So, wow. Already a change in the realm. So his daughter, uh, Queen Ermengarde of Italy, uh, of obviously the house Carling, uh, has, uh, has taken the throne. Obviously we can unpin the king now. Uh, the king is dead. Long live the queen. And uh, we can pin her up. Um, she's certainly a warrior, a brave person, uh, someone who can, uh, can, can stand up to people and hopefully be a good guardian of the realm. So it'll be interesting to see how she, 
uh, continues on in what is very much a man's world in this uh, this day and age. And, you know, certainly with so many powerful male relatives, um, it will be interesting as to what this is going to do to the realm. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But, you know, very sad to hear about the king. Uh, how did he die? Let's have a little look. Uh, he was almost decapitated. Oh, dear. Right, so almost decapitated by a bishop, no less. No, that is not good. He is not a man who should be wearing uh, the uh, the garb of the church. Uh, so where where is where's he? So he is here. All right. Well, I we'll have to try and uh, remember about him. Uh, he is not someone to be trusted at all. Certainly not someone who. Uh, who should be, uh, you know, engaged in the, the politics of state and uh, uh, sort of guiding the, the flock of Christ. So we, we need to sort of keep an eye on that. Uh, Mad King's Fortress. There is an abandoned fortress in Oviedo that was built by a Mad King according to local legend. He was said to be an un unpredictable erratic man of irredeemable and unmeasurable cruelties. Uh, through, uh, sorry, though even, uh, though the fortifications are no longer as good as they used to be, my soldiers still find it useful as an outpost at least. Lately, there are rumours that the spirit of the king and his soldiers can be seen walking around the dilapidated ramparts, even in broad daylight. While some consider this an ill omen, others note that such stories would easily frighten any foreign enemies as well. So, how peculiar, I wonder if the Mad King's spirit is there. So, we've gained a haunted, abandoned fortress. So, which has helped us with our fortification level and our hostile raid time, but has impacted on our control of the realm. People are a little bit unnerved. Hmm, well, one to keep an eye on. Um, obviously, we don't want ghosts walking about. So, um, let's see, oh, a knight has arrived, and he is a resentful villain. Well, although he is a reasonable knight, I'm sure, and he is one of our culture, he is certainly not one of Christ's children. He is not um, the, an appropriate fit for our court, our godly court. Um, so, he is welcome to stay for a little while. We will show him some Christian charity, but I think... When the time comes, unless he suddenly decides to change his ways, I think when the time comes he can go on his way, uh, and that will be that. Um, we've got the betrothal to our neighbour, and so we now have our ally here, uh, which is great. And so, um, you know, we can stand a, on a united front to protect the people. Uh, social manipulation. The first time it happened, I barely even gave it a moment's thought, but my marshal, uh, Ferdulf, has grown bolder. He challenges no lo sorry, his challenges no longer pass unnoticed at the council table. He is testing my limits. The others are sure to follow unless I give him a taste of his own medicine. So, this is probably his negatives coming through, the vengeful side of him coming through. He's uh, he has got a little bit of a, a little bit of a bad streak in him in some places, and uh, obviously we need to try and encourage that out of him. We need to set an example. Um, I think, I mean, the idea of, of forgetting to invite him leave, and uh, leaves him in the dark. Ugh. I, I just think we need to just try and turn the other cheek if there's an option to do that, but. Uh, I shall have tasks which are impossible to complete. Well, that wouldn't be kind. Uh, a subtle threat of violence will put an end to this. No, we certainly wouldn't do that. How dare you challenge your count? Well, I think the, the, the kindest way is to forget. Um, perhaps with a hint of that, he can perhaps learn to change his ways. And um, But, you know, he's, he's obviously proving a little bit hard to get through to. So, you know, we shall have to keep an eye on him in the long run. But, um, okay, so we are, that's it, we're swaying our bishop. And is that a new knight? Yes, it is. And an antagonist. 
Well, he's a holy warrior. He's a blade master, misguided warrior. He has some negative traits, but he's not a complete um, loss. Um, there, there is hope for him to uh, get closer to, to God and to the church and things. And so I'm thinking he would be a nice addition to our realm. However, we do need more money, so we'll have to wait for now. But that's something we can look at. Intrusive thoughts. Nothing riveting is happening today at the council meeting. I observe my councillors with disinterest as they argue about things that frankly are of little consequence. It almost It's almost as if they want to find things to argue about even when nothing is going on. Then a silly thought occurs to me. What if, right now, I suddenly stood up and started shouting random nonsense? Or if I ran around dancing like a lunatic? Or if I hit one of my counsellors on the head for being an, an annoying, boring twit? How would they all react to such behaviour? I chuckled to myself, I, I must be terribly bored if I'm imagining such things. A couple of my counsellors must have noticed the faint smile on my face as they asked if something uh, was on my mind. Oh, nothing now. Uh, remind me what we were discussing about. So yes, let's get back to it. I think we're diligent. This is more. That's what we do. We we work and daydreaming is for for other people. So let's have a little look. Divine focus. Since about a month back, I have been having a recurring dream in which I discuss theology with Fort Fortuna, Saint Joseph, and Saint George. Uh, perhaps they have chosen me to spread their word and reward me with their blessings in turn. I will pray too. Uh, so, so, so there's St. Joseph for a happy family, so close family members and spouses that gain some opinion of me. Uh, St. George for strength in battle, so confident strategist. Uh, Fortuna for wit and luck. And I cannot presume uh, to be chosen. Well, certainly, I mean... I think it would be the family. Um, they are our life. I mean, we're not a warlike king. Well, we're not even a king. We're not even a warlike count, even. Um, fortune, it's not fortune, it's God's will. You know, so, and, you know, yes, I, I could say, I could think along those lines that, you know, who am I to decide whether I'm chosen or not? But, um, you know, ultimately, I think, um, I think family is the way forward. We are... Uh, a product of our environment and our family and that's that's great um oh heresy i was just going to look at that i mean let's have a quick look at this the pope is our head of culture we are currently working on mots so some uh, uh fortification buildings so that'll be nice to help defend our lands um heresy insularis in Yestrad Clud. I don't know what. Uh, oh, that'll be um, sort of uh, southern Scotland as it is. So up here. So Petty King Art Gal of Yestrad Clud has uh, announced to the world that he and his vassals have converted to insularism. Having become disillusioned with the teachings of the Catholic priests, the nobles of Yestrad Clud no longer could consider the clergy to be righteous and true and are distancing themselves from their former religious institutions. They are instead professing themselves insularists whose doctrines they feel better align with God's will. So, let's have a little look at that. So he's, he's changed his uh, branch of Christianity. It is still under the Pope. He still looks to His Holiness for religious guidance. But his his views are astray. They it, it's changed the way um, that he, he does things, and really, ultimately, uh, he will only have himself to blame. Uh, we are certainly not going to make his mistake and follow him into that. I just only hope that things don't spread too much. Um, I mean, uh, it's spread quite a lot there. Look, it's obviously all over Ireland and the top of Scotland. Um, so I'll have to see, you have to keep an eye on that uh, and the uh, potential danger that that would pose uh, if uh, it were to spread down into our realms. Um, but um, yes, it's certainly uh, going to be a bit of an adventure with all that. But 
Um, and my wife is pregnant, which is good. So we will see how we go with that. We already have our son. He's obviously now five, so he's growing up nicely. Um, but I think for today we are going to leave it there. That is part one of this series. And you can see the sort of thing that we're going to try and do. We're going to try and play this from a very in-depth roleplay perspective. And I hope that we've started that on a good footing. If you think there is more I can do or I could have done this differently, then please do um, comment or get in touch. Otherwise, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, I'd love to have you on board with us and uh, we will go from there. We'll have a look at this night next time and we'll pick up the action from there as we go through and see where this playthrough takes us. But for now, as always, look after yourselves and I will see you in the next one. Take care.